Good morning, children. Welcome back to another session of biology classes of class nine. We are we have done with the chapter of cell, the unit of life, and I'll be summarizing the whole chapter in this uh, video lesson, and I'll give some important uh, terms which uh, will be very useful in your future uh, life. Okay, you should know about these terms. So let us start with this uh, class, children. Okay. Uh, to summarize, we'll deal with all the uh, topics in brief. Okay, what we have discussed and what are the important things regarding this chapter. Okay. Now, first and foremost, we discussed what that what is a cell, and I also told you that cell is the fundamental structural and functional unit of all living beings. Why structural and why functional? That also I told you that structural because. Uh, whenever, for example, we consider a part, for example, we take a, uh, our um, the skin, we take a, a small part of our skin and we examine under the microscope, it is composed of cell. So, what we see uh, or what we understand that our body is composed and our form and shape is given by the cells. This body is composed of cells. So, it forms a structural unit and if we talk about the functional unit means any function in the body of the Animal is due to the activity of its individual cells. Okay, each cell performs its own function, and hence all the physiological functions of our body take place. Okay, that is the meaning of structural unit and functional unit. Now we also discussed about the invention of microscopes. What was uh, the thing we discussed about microscopes? That the first microscope was con constructed by whom? Antony van Leeuwenhoek. Okay, he was a Dutch scientist. And uh, uh, one thing very important that he constructed nearly 400 microscopes and it, they consisted of a single biconvex lens and these were all simple microscopes, okay, the one uh, which Anthony van Leeuwenhoek constructed. Then came this uh, Robert Hooke, okay, who was an English scientist and he developed microscopes with two lenses. So, whenever naturally two lenses are there, naturally the uh, this magnification will increase a lot and these uh, um, microscopes which were constructed by Robert Hooke were considered as these uh, compound microscopes which, which we see nowadays, okay. And uh, this, uh, he used concave mirrors, uh, Hooke used concave mirrors. Now, what about the discovery of the cell we discussed? We discussed the discovery was of the cell was mainly done by Hooke. What he saw, he saw under the microscope, what thing he observed under the microscope? He observed a thin slice of cork, okay. Uh, this oak tree, uh, this uh, the bark of the oak tree is uh, when it's dried, it is known as the cork, and it is the corks are made of uh, of uh, this material. And he, he took a thin slice of that cork and he uh, examined under the microscope. And what did he see? He saw that there were compartments, small compartments which appeared, uh, means box-like compartments, which uh, looked somewhat like a uh, this honeycomb. Okay, and uh, these. Uh, Compartments somewhat look somewhat uh, looked like uh, small rooms, or uh, uh, where means there is a uh, rooms in the monastery, okay, where this Robert Hooke uh, lived, and so he uh, named these little rooms as cells because uh, cell means what little room. So this was all about the discovery of cell, but this, the cells which Robert Hooke saw under his microscope were all dead cells; they were not living cells. And uh, you know that uh, after this. Uh, uh, compound microscope, this uh, Robert Hooke microscope was later on, uh, uh, means now is, it is used as compound microscope and one more type of microscope, there are many types of microscopes which are invented, one of them is again electron microscope, which is a very important one because it uh, nearly objects or it magnifies any, any object up to 2000 times, okay, and uh, it generally, it does not, uh, means uh, it uh, generally uses this beams of electrons to magnify the image and this beams of electrons can be moved from one place to another according to the placement of the object by these magnets okay this is about electron microscope we also discussed the cell theory who were the three scientists who postulated the cell theory the first one was matthias Kaleiden and theodore schoen it was the second and the third uh, uh, postulate of the cell theory that is all cells arise from the pre existing cells i told you this was given by rudolf virchow okay now uh, we also discussed about the three postulates of cell theory what are they the cell is the smallest unit of structure of all living things the cell is the unit of function of all living things and all cell arise from the pre-existing cells okay now uh, we also discussed about cells are how much numerous and how much 
uh, how small they are. So we discuss larger an organism, greater is the number of cells in the body. Single celled organism, which ones, what, which examples can you give children? You can give about this uh, uh, amoeba, then bacteria you can give, okay, all these are single celled animals. Similarly, if you are, you want to give a few celled animals, very few are there, then spirogyra you can give, okay, wall box you can give, they have few cells. And uh, multicellular organisms, there are many. First of all, we ourselves can, give, uh, can be an uh, example, it is human beings. Okay, many plants, animals all come under this multicellular organisms. And if we tell that uh, how small uh, these uh, cells are, how much small they are? So, uh, the smallest cells are that of bacteria. Okay, bacteria means I will, I have also I think told you the smallest uh, uh, cell which is uh, the mycoplasma galliseptacum. Okay, myco, M-Y-C-O, plasma, P-L-A-S-M-A, mycoplasma galliseptacum, G-A-L-L-I-S, Galli sept C E P sept T I C U M Galli septicum. So these these are the smallest cells. Longest cells are the nerve cells, of course, and the largest cells are the bird's egg. Okay. Now we'll discuss that the smallness of the cell, the greater the efficiency. So this is very important. Smallness of the cell and greater is the efficiency. So cells generally remain small in size, and because why this uh, characteristic is there in the cells. Because different regions of the cell can communicate very easily, okay, with each other uh, rapidly for uh, the cell-to-cell -cell function, uh, to, for, so that the cell-to-cell -cell function can uh, take place effectively. That's why the cells are smaller in size. Also, the cells have smaller in size, uh, in surface area by volume increases, okay. The, uh, there is a greater diffusion for this and this is very important for the greater diffusion of substances in and out of the cell. You remember most probably that I gave you the example of this uh, second point that is uh, smaller, uh, this sorry, surface area by volume ratio I had explained with the two types of cubes, one with uh, all the sides of one centimeter, another of uh, another cube of uh, uh, two centimeter all the sides. And we saw that in one centimeter, one with, uh, the cube with all the sides as one centimeter, we saw the surface area by volume was six is to uh, one. Thereby, the um, uh, this uh, volume of this uh, or surface area by volume of the two centimeters uh, uh, sides of the cube that was three is to one. So see, we see that the volume is same in both the cases, but the surface area in the smaller one is much more than the bigger one. Okay, so this is the difference. We also saw that the struct uh, we uh, read about the structure of the cell. What we saw about the structure of the cell, first of all, I told you that the uh, our cell mainly, uh, if we try to divide all the parts, we divide into three parts, a generalized cell, okay, in general, not uh, means any cell, just a general cell, what are the parts they have, the cell membrane, the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So, first of all, we will discuss about the cell membrane, okay, what we discussed about the cell membrane, and uh, children, before that, we start with cell membrane, we, I also told about why the structures inside the cell are known as cell organelles and not cell or organs because the cell organs or structures are very small they are very microscopic cell itself is microscopic naturally the cell structures will be more smaller so that's why they are not called as organs they are called the cell organelles cell organelles means little organs okay and what are the parts of the uh, now we'll discuss about the cell membrane what about the cell membrane we discussed? Each cell is surrounded by cell membrane or plasma membrane. Cell membrane is also known as the plasma membrane. Now, cell membrane has fine pores through which uh, substances may enter or leave the cell. The, wall, this, the cell membrane is selectively permeable. We discussed about that. It also gives a particular shape and size of the cell to the cell. And uh, uh, we also uh, discussed about the cell wall. Cell wall in uh, contrast to cell membrane is freely permeable, okay. And it is non-living. Cell membrane is living and cell uh, wall is non-living. And it is made up of cellulose. While cell membrane is made up of what? Lipoproteins, okay. So, these are some of the differences which we can uh, uh, mark uh, between cell wall and cell membrane. Now, uh, we have... Uh, some other uh, means organelles we discussed, but this first we discussed about the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm, we discussed that it is semi-liquid substance and it is inside the cell membrane, bounded by the cell membrane and it consists of all the cell organelles, okay. First and foremost cell organelle we discussed about the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is double walled, okay. It, it is a network of double membranes, double walled and it has uh, the DNA of its own. Uh, sorry, uh, endoplasmic doesn't have real DNA of its own. Uh, this uh, it is a network of double membranes and uh, at its outer end, endoplasmic reticulum is connected with the 
outer means that is outside it is connected with the cell membrane and inner side it is connected with the nucleus and uh, uh, as its uh, inner end it is connected with the nuclear membrane it is it appears rough when uh, means if particles of ribosomes are attached to it it appears rough and hence it is rough endoplasmic reticulum and uh, if it is uh, it, no particles of ribosomes are attached to it then it is a smooth one and hence known as smooth endoplasmic reticulum now it forms a supporting framework of the cell whose the endoplasmic reticulum next we come to ribosomes they are not the, known as the protein factories of the cell and uh, protein factories of the cell means uh, they uh, synthesize protein of course next we have mitochondria okay mitochondria are the energy producers of the cell they are also called the powerhouse of the cell and why they are called so because they you know, the food which we take that is glucose is oxidized by uh, in the mitochondria to produce energy rich compound which is atp that is adenosine triphosphate and these mitochondria are double walled bags they are uh, surrounded by two walls okay uh, and uh, they have finger like projections inside which are known as the cristae uh, cristae okay now we come to golgi apparatus golgi apparatus what it was that golgi apparatus occurs in the form of granules or uh, filamentous rods and they are mainly concerned with the secretion of the cell okay it includes the enzymes and hormones all are secreted by the golgi apparatus children uh, uh, one of the questions i think i got from a uh, child that um, cisternae what is the meaning of cisternae okay uh, now this cisternae are actually the uh, bag uh, tubular uh, bags membrane bound bags uh, or sacs rather uh, distubular means elongated and membrane bound okay so that's why uh, the, these are known as and this is a part of uh, endoplasmic reticulum as well as golgi apparatus both have these cisternae and they are they are tubular in structure and bounded by membranes okay that's why they are known as cisternae they are parts of golgi apparatus as well as endoplasmic reticulum and we come to lysosomes next that they are concerned with intracellular digestion that is uh, they are also known as suicide bags because whenever any organelle becomes worn out they can destroy it okay these uh, because of the uh, uh, enzymes or all these which which the, the, the digestive enzymes which are present there inside centrosome and centrioles found only in animal cell and it is a clear area um, uh, of cytoplasm where it is present it has uh, two centrioles each centrosome consists of two centrioles and there are they are all these two centrioles are perpendicular at right angles to each other okay and uh, in plant cell there are no centrioles the centrosomes and centrioles the main function of centrosome and centrioles is what they they initiate cell division they help in the formation of spindle fibers okay and now we come to plastids plastids are found only in plant cell and uh, mm, these uh, plastids are actually uh, uh, of three different types that is leucoplast chromoplast as well as uh, this uh, uh, chloroplast so leucoplast are colorless plastids they don't have do not have any pigment in them they are generally present in the underground modified stems that is uh, potato and uh, roots all these places leukocytes are present now we come to chromoplast Chromo chromoplast means they are the colored plast plastids mainly the uh, colored which are given by these chromoplasts are yellow orange and red and the pigments which are present are xanthophyll uh, carotene all these are present generally the yellow and orange red pigment some other pigments also anthocyanin which i told you that they are present in beetroot they are not present in chromoplast okay they are present in the vacuoles of the I means in the cell sap of the vacuoles okay and we discussed about chloroplast also it naturally contains the green pigment which is chlorophyll which is present in the leaves and mainly concerned with which is concerned with photosynthesis remember children chloroplast has a dna of its own and has the capacity to divide that's why uh, next uh, we'll be coming to this uh, non living substances there are also some non living substances in the uh, cell like the granules of uh, glycogen and fats and starch and vacuoles also we have where uh, this is, uh, in plant cell mainly the vacuoles are very big and they contain a liquid which is known as the cell sap this is only not only water many other substances are also dissolved in this liquid but in animal cell the vacuoles are not so, so prominent and there may they may be there may be some vacuoles which might be present there nucleus coming to nucleus which is very very important okay it is known as the brain of the cell why it is known as the brain of the cell if questions might be asked so what you will write it coordinates all the various life processes of the cell and hence uh, it also is plays an important part in cell division and heredity hence known as the brain of the cell okay 
Now, uh, I told you nucleus is bounded by a nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane. It consists also of what are the uh, liquid, uh, dense liquid filled inside, which is known as the nucleoplasm. Nucleoplasm has uh, uh, two structures mainly, the chromatin fibers, which are thread-like structures in the um, in a non-dividing cell, and also the nucleolus. A nu a nucleolus is a solid uh, mass. It might there might be two. Uh, nucleus also three nucleus or nucleolus also not nucleus sorry uh, nucleolus in a particular nucleus now it is generally participates in photosynthesis nucleolus and i told you about the difference between chromosomes and chromatin do you remember that a very important question from the examination point of view chromosomes can be only seen they are a bit condensed structures condensed chromatin are known as chromosomes and they can be only seen when the cell wants to divide but when the cell is not dividing, they are in the form of chromatin threads, fine threads which are known as chromatin. Okay? We also discussed about uh, genes. What are the genes? Mm, on the surface, uh, this chromatin uh, uh, actually is made up of what? This chromatin fibers are made up of actually DNA. Okay? DNA is the uh, uh, means, uh, main hereditary material which is present in the chromosomes or chromatin. This part, any part of the uh, this DNA, any a particular part of the um, this DNA is known as the genes. Okay, these genes are uh, what they are concerned with. Mainly, these genes are they are the hereditary units. Hereditary units means what? Any characters which we get from our parents is by the medium or by these genes through these genes. These genes only come from our parents to ourselves. That is from our father and mother, and then that is why we inherit their qualities. Okay. Now, this uh, DNA, uh, the full form of DNA was what? Deoxyribonucleic acid, okay. Now, genes and not uh, number of chromosomes determine the characters of a species. Remember this very clearly. Number of chromosomes might be, for example, three or four organisms might have the same number of chromosomes. For example, we have uh, mm, this one, uh, 46 chromosomes, okay. Uh, uh, 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs, okay. If we uh, pair it, then it will be 23. Similarly, if we talk about uh, this one, lion, tiger and mouse, house cat, sorry, uh, lion, tiger and house cat, they all have 38 chromosomes, but they, do they look alike? No. Why is that so? Because our characteristics which we show does not depend, up, depend upon how many chromosomes we have, but how many or what type of genes we have, what type of genes we have inherited from our parents. That determines our uh, characteristics or our features, whatever we have. Okay, that's why they look different. All these three species look different. Okay, uh, children, we also discussed about uh, the difference between uh, plant cell and animal cell. What did we discuss about plant cell and animal cell? There are many differences between them. The first and foremost, cell wall is present in plant cell, which is not present in animal cell. Centrosome again is present in animal cell, not present in plant cell. Very important. Vacuoles are pres very prominent in case of plant cell and in vacuoles are very small or and temporary in case of animal cell. In a plastids, if we consider, it is not present in animal cell but present in plant cell. Mm, similarly, if we talk about the size, then uh, it is like uh, plant cell are larger in size than the animal cell. Cytoplasm is not so dense in case of plant cell but in case of animal cell it is very, very denser. Arrangement of cytoplasm, only a very thin lining of the cytoplasm is seen. Uh, in case of plant cell, if you are asked why a thin lining of cytoplasm is seen, because most of the uh, place is occupied by a big vacuole, okay, that's why. And in case of animal cell, cytoplasm fill almost the entire cell, okay. We also discussed about the uh, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, children. What did we discuss about the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells? We discussed that prokaryotic cells, if I divide the word prokaryotic, it comes from two words, pro, which means early or primitive, and carry on which means nucleus that means a primitive nucleus is present in prokaryotic cells like bacteria okay that is their uh, nucleus is not bounded by a nuclear membrane that is they do not have an organized nucleus and their nucleus is not called as nucleus it is called as nucleoid okay and uh, in case of eukaryotic cells u e u u means true okay and uh, carry on means what Nucleus. So, they have a true nucleus. True nucleus means what? A well formed and organized nucleus that is bounded by a nuclear membrane. Plants, animals, whatever organisms we see around us are mainly eukaryotic. Okay, children, one interesting thing I will tell you. Can you name one eukaryotic cell which is, we know eukaryotic cells have well developed nucleus. 
or rather can you name one or uh, two eukaryotic cells which are without nucleus can you name can just think about it anyone okay eukaryotic cells which are without nucleus two i'll give you examples eukaryotic cells are always with nucleus okay rbcs red blood cells red blood cells i told you in class 8 also i don't know you remember or not but you should remember that rbcs though they are eukaryotic cells they the mature rbcs they lack nucleus but an Im immature one which is just formed they have a nucleus but later on this nucleus is pinched off from their uh, cell okay and this is and this reason why it is pinched off because it wants to carry more and more hemoglobin because hemoglobin binds with oxygen and that's that's why more and more amount of oxygen can be carried okay and uh, if i am talking about uh, this uh, uh, another eukaryotic cell which doesn't have nucleus are the phloem sieve tubes sieve tubes of the phloem you know that uh, companion cells uh, sieve tubes all these are present in phloem but these sieve tubes which are present in phloem they do not have any nucleus and all the functions of the nucleus are performed by the uh, companion cells which are just adjacent to this sieve tube cells s i e v e sieve tubes t u b e s tubes sieve tube cells these are two uh, very important things which you need to know children okay now uh, lastly we'll discuss in this chapter about protoplasm okay protoplasm what we discussed children that protoplasm is a living substance of an organism and uh, always remember protoplasm is equal to cytoplasm plus nucleus cytoplasm plus nucleus means whatever is inside the cell membrane consists of the protoplasm okay not the cell membrane cytoplasm plus nucleus is considered as the protoplasm so children uh, by this we complete the full chapter of cell uh, we will be discussing some of the question answers uh, in the next video lesson maybe uh, till uh, one thing i want to just uh, tell you about before i conclude this lesson i want to tell you about the next uh, slide it is about the stem cell you might be seeing that at the end of your chapter you have an extra information about stem cells so i'll give a very rough idea about stem cells just listen to it very carefully okay now uh, what are the stem cells you know that any cell in our body is specialized specialized means what specialized means they are given a particular task to complete for example a nerve cell nerve cell will always transmit nerve impulse and it will not do the work of an rbc or a wbc isn't it so they are specialized to do their own work stem cell is an undifferentiated or unspecialized cell what is undifferentiated i have explained in class 8 hope you remember undifferentiated means they are not specialized to perform any function they are present in our body in adults as well as in embryonic stage and they have the capability of unlimited divisions okay in the adult and embryo both places it is present they have a capability of to undergo unlimited division and can give rise to one or several cell types that is they can for example any of the cells of your uh, liver are not functioning okay so stem cells can uh, means uh, uh, stem cells can replace them and uh, can uh, give rise to more liver cells but that is uh, possible by stem cell therapy okay in embryo embryonic stage it is possible uh, within without any therapies but in case of adults it is only possible by stem cell therapy okay now children these stem cells are undifferentiated means they can be modified to perform any other cells work means for example any part for example in an embryo when the embryo is developing the uh, lungs are not uh, functioning properly and the lung is damaged somehow it is damaged okay now what happens the stem cells are pre pre present in embryo in ample amount lots of amount okay now what happens the stem cells migrate in the lungs and they modify themselves and get specialized to perform the uh, functions of the uh, cells of the lungs okay the they form the tissues of the lungs similarly there are different types of stem cells like the embryonic stem cells which are present only in the uh, embryos okay up to a certain cell it is actually the blastocyst stage uh, this you will uh, learn in the higher classes blastocyst stage is just you know that our the embryo implants in the mother's womb before developing in the blastocyst stage it impl implants into the mother's womb so in that stage it is uh, all these embryonic stem cells stem cells are present which have lots and lots power of unlimited division and they can give rise to any cell types whatever they want 
in adults also in now also we have some stem cells but they are very limited in number and they are mainly present in the bone marrow for example in the bone marrow the uh, stem cells which are present they give rise to the uh, this uh, blood cells like uh, wbc rbc all these cells they give rise to okay now mm, one more thing, children, you will see a term in this uh, extra information that is hemopoietic, it is written. Hemo hematopoietic. Hematopoietic means which help in the formation of poesis means synthesis, okay. And hemato means blood. So, hematopoietic means uh, synthesis of blood cells, okay. One more term, you will get pluripotent, okay. Pluripotent means any cell which has the capability of developing into any cell types is known as pluripotent stem cells, okay. Now, what happens actually these pluripotent, uh, one more thing is given in your book is induced pluripotent stem cells. What are these stem cells? Uh, actually, uh, what happens? Uh, these uh, cells are induced to behave in a, such a way that they can go in a particular place in our body and can modify themselves to perform the function of those damaged cells. Okay, They are in, uh, induced uh, or they are induced to function like that. So, this is not, uh, our body naturally cannot do it. Uh, stem cell therapy is used to do this one more example i am giving you very interesting one maybe i have given you in class 8 just listen to it what happens actually for example some uh, uh, children they some of uh, suffer from some uh, diseases blood, genetic blood diseases like thalassemia okay uh, now what happens uh, for example uh, the elder child is suffering from a uh, blood disease genetic blood disease which is thalassemia now uh, what happens here these uh, children uh, continuously have to take blood transfusions okay now, what happens here is that um, their blood cells are not functioning properly, okay. Now, how this genetic disease is corrected, okay. It is corrected like for example, um, this uh, child which is suffering from thalassemia, uh, her, I mean, her or his, his or her mother is expecting a child, okay, a small brother or sister. Now, when that child or brother or sister will be born, that child, you know that the child is connected to the mother by this umbilical cord. And this umbilical cord has many stem cells, okay. Now, what is done? These stem cells are taken from the newborn brother or sister. And the stem cells are injected into the elder brother or sister. And what happens? These stem cells modify themselves and they correct all the blood cells which are damaged in the elder brother or sister to modify the body, okay. The, all the uh, these genetic disorders or orders are corrected by these processes umbilical cord has umbilical cord as you know is the connection or the cord which connects the uh, child within the mother's womb with the mother okay for the um, exchange of oxygen food blood all these things etc etc okay so these are it's all about stem cells and uh, uh, i hope uh, you are going through the chapter well go through the chapter well children in the next class i'll discuss some of the question answers from the exercise uh, so stay tuned and uh, uh, next uh, video lesson very soon. Till then, thank you and goodbye.